Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, Lord make, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. O God, whose image we bear, and whose name we carry, yours is the world and all it contains. Recall us to our true allegiance, so that above the powers and rulers of this world, you alone may claim our loyalty and love. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Holy God, the mystery of your presence stretches far beyond us, yet we know you draw near to us in Christ, walking beside us, guiding us with wisdom, loving us with boundless grace. Your Spirit encourages us as we follow Christ and gives us the energy and insight we need to serve you. Holy God, we need to be assured of your presence this day, to be embraced and strengthened and comforted and healed. We claim to be your people, but we often forget to love as you do. We claim to seek your guidance, but we often turn from your ways. We ask for your forgiveness, but we often fail to forgive as you forgive. We claim to listen for your word, but we often ignore your wisdom. Forgive us, amend who we are, and direct who you would have us to be, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You know us each by name, O God, and in your sight we have found favor. Yet our minds cannot comprehend the vision of your glory or the vastness of your love. Grant that as we glimpse your greatness, we may always return to you the praise that is yours alone. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favour in my sight. Now if I have found favour in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favour in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favour in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favour in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there's a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing to the Lord for his glorious triumph, the horse and the rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord has become my strength and refuge. The Lord, the Lord himself, himself has become, become my, my Saviour. 
He is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord, the Lord himself is a mighty warrior. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Holy, awesome, worker of wonders. In steadfast love you led your people. You guided your redeemed with your great strength. You brought them in safety to your holy place and planted them firm on your own mountain. You brought them into your own house. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. When he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. Our Gospel reading today, Christ is responding to a veiled challenge with this broad, sweeping statement concerning our actions. This statement is so broad because of how we are to understand those things which are God's. For to take seriously our Christian faith that God is the maker of all creation, then everything must be God's, even those things that are the emperor's, just as our own personal possessions are God's. Christ saying this provides insight into how he expects Christians to treat others as well as how we are to interact with all of creation. Christ's response to this challenge at first appears confrontational, especially compared to the meek and mild Jesus that we hear and sing about so often on Sunday mornings. Yet today's reading is no exception. It is another example of the Gospels showing us the method in which Christ brings about the kingdom of heaven. Today's Gospel reading, Jesus is calling listeners and readers to recall the creation story in Genesis by reminding us of our agency, our free will, given by God. God, when making all of creation, found at the end of each day of work that the parts of creation were good. And it was not until he had completed his work that creation became very good. In recalling all creation, Jesus is reminding his challengers that they and us as humans are not created to exist passively in the world, and that creation is not a meaningless collection of stuff. Each part of creation is good, from the people to the grass of the field. Now it is important to remember that the Pharisees and the Herodians were learned groups within Judean society and social leaders. Jesus' response to their question is a response to the, their intention behind the question, the malice that he is aware of. That is to say, our free will, like every person's free will, is not a freedom from obligation. It is the freedom to be fruitful for all of creation. Jesus is challenging his questioners to consider how each action must be taken with consideration to how it will impact not only themselves, but the whole of creation around them. It is not enough to simply ensure that myself as an individual is able to live a fruitful and full life. 
We as Christians are called by Christ in today's Gospel reading to ensure that each part of creation we have control over, be that money, possessions, land, or animals, are doing the most that they are capable of to propagate a more fruitful world for all to live within. This in my mind creates a daunting task, for it is easy to give to the Emperor all things that are the Emperor's, and to give all things that are God's to God. But how do we enact this? How does our free will control small aspects of creation, function in such a vast world? Jesus is using a denarius as an example of something that is the emperor's, showing us the power that an individual has when faced with a seemingly untouchable and unchangeable worldly power like the Roman Empire. Christ, in calling us to render unto the emperor what is his, is calling us to engage the powers of the world as they present themselves to us. And while we are engaged with them, we are being called to examine these power structures and social systems with a critical eye. Just as Jesus' answer today is reflective of the intention of those asking him and shows that we must also engage with the intention of our world's power structures and social systems, we must ask ourselves in every place, we have influence and control. Are we upholding the inherent good in each part of creation while doing this? And are we building with those good things something that can be called very good? For each person has a different area of influence within the world that we exercise our free will. So it is within these areas of influence that we are called by Christ today to constantly question and push for greater inclusivity and equity. It is through these seemingly small, individual actions that we are called to change the world and continually work towards the kingdom of heaven. Amen.
And now in the words of Hear, O Israel, let us confess our faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, Lord our God, God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. God of our hearts and our hopes, as the season continues to change and harvests are gathered, we thank you for the beauty around us, for brilliant colours, birds flying south, the crackle of fallen leaves and the rhythms of this time of year. We are grateful for your steadfast love amid so much that changes. This autumn we also face unpredictable changes as the pandemic continues. Draw close to those who find the uncertainty unsettling and help us to preserve our connection to you and to each other. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of our imaginations and insights, we thank you for all the ways you inspire human minds to create things which improve the lives of your people. We are grateful for all the medical efforts taken to manage COVID-19 and for the scientists testing vaccines. Give them perseverance and success. Guide politicians and policy makers so that breakthroughs and resources are shared with the most vulnerable. God, in your mercy. Amen. God of neighbours and neighbourhoods, we praise you for everyone working to build and maintain healthy communities, for teachers and librarians, healthcare workers, coaches, construction workers, farmers and labourers, store clerks and waitstaff. So many have had their workplaces changed and their livelihoods threatened by the pandemic. Give them perseverance and encouragement. Make us good neighbours to all who serve our community and remind us to say thank you. God, in your mercy. God of comfort and compassion, we pray for all those who are struggling this autumn, whatever the reason. We remember before you those facing illness or waiting for treatment. those who have lost income and worry about winter expenses and shelter. Those who are grieving the loss of someone close. And those whose mental health is under pressure these days. Awaken your people around the world to attend to the needs of those at risk in our communities so that they will know your comfort and compassion. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will, will be done, done on earth, earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now follow in the way of Jesus. See others as he did. Dare to give freely as he did. Love unconditionally, as he did, knowing that you are embraced and upheld by the source of life and love and hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those who you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever.